So this video won't focus entirely on the events of January 6th. What this video will, however, do is it will focus on addressing some of these misconceptions that Trump uh, intentionally had people go do certain actions or wanted people to break the law. And I'm giving you a very charitable view on particular statements, but uh, the first couple of statements that I'll share with you, and then we'll show you the debate is, one, Trump telling them to go and peacefully and patriotically protest, meaning let your voices be heard. Then I'll also show you where Nancy Pelosi uh, knew that there's going to be this protest, knew this was going to potentially uh, be a large crowd, and she admits fault for not taking adequate steps uh, to keep the area safe. And so once again, Trump's statement, the Nancy Pelosi statement. Also, I noticed that this was left out of the documentary that they shot. Uh, that being said, please enjoy the video. If you are a liberal listening to this and you would like to come on and debate me, we can. Uh, just message me, PM me, or email me, or even comment in this video, and I can set up a time where you and I can have a one-on-one. -on -one. Once again, thank you, and enjoy the presentation. The right thing, and only count the electors who have been lawfully slated. Lawfully slated. I know that everyone here will soon be marching over to the Capitol building to peacefully and patriotically make your voices heard. Today, we will see whether Republicans stand strong for integrity of our elections, but whether or not they stand strong for our country. We have responsibility, Terry. We did not have any accountability for what was going on there, and we should have. This is ridiculous. You're going to ask me in the middle of the thing when they've already breached the the uh, inaugural stuff that that uh, uh, should we call the Capitol Police? I mean the uh, National Guard. Why weren't the National Guard there to begin with? They thought that they had sufficient. No, there was not a question of how they had been. They don't know. They clearly didn't know, and I take responsibility for not having them just prepare for more. Do you think the active executive of this nation should be calling the Georgia Secretary of State and saying, help me find 11,000 votes to steal my election? Yeah, I don't think he said, help me find 11,000 votes so I can steal the election. Okay, so get rid of the steal my election part, because that was rhetorical. Um, but do you think he should have called the Georgia Secretary of State and said, help me find 11,000 votes? I, I think if one wanted to be charitable, he's wanting to make sure that everything's, quote, you know, accounted for. So I need you to look, make sure all this is there, because this is what I need. Just to seal the deal is 11,000. And I think that if you look at even the race between Bush and Gore, it was all the, the same thing. They had arguments over how to count ballots, different punches. Uh, they were looking for additional ballots, uh, estimating that there might be certain amount of ballots lost or uh, voters that might not have been counted. And so it's not uncommon for people to want to say, hey, I want every vote. I need this. Yeah, don't you think that call would have gone a little bit like, hey, Secretary of State, I feel like the mail-in ballots or late voters, something is going wrong. Can you recount? Not, hey, I need specifically 11,000. No, I, I just don't think that he was like, hey, I need you to make uh, 11,000 fake votes. I don't think that was his intention, and I don't believe that's what he was indicating. Now, did he want Pence to overturn certain things when they were doing the verification process so that he could hold it at the state level more to verify what he thought might be wrong? Yes. But as far as as far as the big like issue in the sixth, when you're looking at that, you have Trump telling them to go down there peacefully, 
like Americans. He actually wanted to go, you know, walk and down patriotically. There and uh, he said, and patriotically. But then you also have Nancy Pelosi, and they've just released this video within the past six months where she's admitting that they could have had access to more people, like actually the National Guard, and she chose not to do it. And so she took responsibility, but that was conveniently left out of the documentary and anything else reported on the mainstream media. Yeah, maybe the political route won't be so great with you, James. Do you think, like, uh, as a Christian, you should be supporting someone that said in the such in low the, tier uh what was it the access hollywood interview uh i like to grab women by the pussy they just uh, let you i was do it literally gonna say dude why don't you just talk to him about grabbing them by the pussy and he literally yeah. went there like, unbelievable so the, so the thing is when we go to vote we only have a choice between two candidates and we have a candidate on one party group that wants to reinstate abortion who's an extremist who would actually allow abortion and like the final trimester which i think is ridiculous and absolutely murder and so then you look at okay you have another candidate who says controversial things things you don't agree with but policy wise wants to leave it up to the state is fine with the three big exceptions that ronald reagan was fine with so it allows women for uh, rape and incest, for example, to still get that. He's fine with that and encourages it. Um, so when I start weighing this out, like somebody who says controversial things, but yet their policies are going to be more in line with my values, I have to vote with that. Are you a single issue voter on abortion? Mm -hmm. No, I'm not a single issue voter, but that is one thing to consider when voting. Um, if if we could generalize here, if you care about like abortions in the la the third trimester, you care about like the loss of human life, could we generalize and say then you then believe that Donald Trump as executive of the United States would lead to less life being lost than Harris overall, not just in abortion cases? Yeah, I think military speaking as well. When it comes to conflict, when it comes to interacting with places like Russia, he was much more better and he engaged more. Biden's just refused to talk to Putin at all. There's been a war in Ukraine and we have a sitting president who won't even talk to this guy. That's shameful. Are you in the habit of voting for convicted felons? Oh my goodness. Well, did I say something weird? <laughs> Isn't he a convicted felon? Well, I know, but it seems it seems to be. I mean, fair, Elliot. Like, I'm I'm not a Trump fan, but like these, like the stuff you're kind of saying is like such kind of like if you're talking to somebody who's like pretty into Trump, they're gonna find some of these arguments, like these little things, like really low tier, kind of like the old grab by the pussy thing. Like, it is low tier. Like that's just pretty low tier. Like I think there's a lot of good criticisms you could make of Trump that I think would be they'd probably Listen, be sir. more. Happy to deal I will, with. I will be you know, happy to deal with my issues. Yeah. The things I care about is not even abortion. It's the immigration, inflation, and energy. I'll talk to you about any of these three issues versus the policies of Kamala Harris, if you're willing, if you're knowledgeable. Yeah, so, so you don't mind if like the U.S. is run by a criminal? Like, that doesn't bother you at all? Well, there you go. Be back again. You're just exactly like, like Elliot. I'm not. I'm not a Trump fan, but like that's not, like what it just seems like. You're just question begging, right? Like he's this ex yeah, but, Well, well in the sense that you're like when you say like well, not making well, let's let well let's be honest. Like right now, like the the people who support Trump, and there are many people who are smart that support Trump that think that his convictions have been wrongly done and that they will be eventually overturned, and it's quite possible they may be overturned now you may come back and say well they're only going to be overturned because he stacked the supreme court in his favor and those are things that you can say but like it is true that if you think that he trump is is bad on policy then you should argue that because that's really all that matters whether he's a dick or not you know john f kennedy was banging 
uh, Marilyn Monroe the whole time he was in office. But nobody gave a crap because people liked John Kennedy and they thought he did a good job as president, despite the fact that he may have had a very questionable moral character. So the thing that we have to... I was just asking a simple question. I was going to say that... I was going to say, the thing that we have to consider, too, when looking at Trump's convictions and these other things, normally these kind of charges, like they had already expired and then they got uh, increased to a higher degree. And it was somebody who actually left, who had very close ties to Biden's administration, who took like a lesser job on the state level, almost like a demotion just to prosecute Trump. So even if it wasn't like, let's say Biden had nothing to do with it. The perception to the world and anybody looking at it is very clear that they're actually trying to use legal measures to lock up a political opponent in the United States. And it's just not good. It's not good optics. So yeah, so what do we think about the January 6th inciting an insurrection? Saying like, uh, what do you call it, the Kamala Harris, and, or I mean, the Biden administrations, you know, trying to lock up Trump, play his political opponent or something. Like, what are you saying? Well, I, I, I'm. Well, trying it's to pretty. Think of the... It's pretty clear, isn't it, James? Like, they've, they've, they keep putting uh, charges against him, and they've even invented new legal theories to have him. And eventually, even somebody who's not a Trump supporter would have to say, look, you guys continue to indict him on everything that you can find. You continue and continue to do that, which has never occurred to any president ever. No president has ever, lots of presidents could have been indicted for things that they did either while in office or after office or before office, but none of them ever have been other than Trump, right? So you have to at least have pause and say, well, even if I don't like Trump, it's possible that there's a, there's a really malicious reason going on why they continue to prosecute him. It's possible. I'm not saying it is the case, but it certainly is possible. Uh, Tim, I don't know if you weigh the evidence of like someone who actually has real criminal charges in their real estate dealings, and those are only the ones he's gotten caught for as an executive. It's it's probably likely he did illegal work. Well, I mean, I'll I'll just well. say this: like like this, if you just if you want to talk about the case, got his daughter into the White certainly. House, right? If you want to talk about the the real estate case. You know, like I actually watched a lot of the trial because I was just interested in seeing what was going on I'm kind of that way. I'm weird that way. Like when he, you know, he's he was indicted for falsifying loan applications for over evaluating his property. So, for instance, like if you owned a home and you're like want to get a loan against your home and you say, OK, they're going to come out and appraise it. You're going to have a discussion. Right. And you. Can either, you say your house is worth X and the bank says it's worth Y, right? Now, they eventually agreed to give Trump a loan for the, high, the amount that he said it was worth. They agreed. They had the ability to underwrite it. They underwrote it and they agreed that they were oh, that the value was fine. So they loaned him the money against his properties, right? And they did that. And in addition, he paid them off. He paid them in full with interest to the banks and under oath, the banks said that they would be happy to do business with Donald Trump again, and they made a lot of money on the loans that he they gave him. That was the bank, right? Nobody, there was no injured party. The party was not injured because if the party was injured, the bank would have sued him, and then it would have been like potentially criminal. That's why the federal lawsuit never went through because they couldn't find an injured party. So you may think – that he's a terrible person. And I actually think he's a horrible guy too, but uh, I'm not willing to sacrifice the things like, I don't want to, I want the game to be played the same way for everybody. Not like a special, we're going to go out and get Trump because we hate his guts and we're going to let everything else slide on the other side. I just want everybody, either you're going to prosecute Trump, prosecute everybody. So the, the other issue, Tim, is that Biden have found to have, all kinds of documents that he shouldn't have had at his house for years and just the same way uh if but in some cases worse than trump in the mar-a-lago because trump was president and should have had access for certain things but the problem is is that they they did an investigation and deemed that biden was incompetent and that he was an older man 
and that he could they could not actually take him to trial because of this. They could not actually do anything. So then the judge in the case for Trump threw that out. And what we hear through the back channels is this this person threw it out because they they looked at it and they called it shenanigans. They said your guy did the same thing. He gets a pass because of this, but yet you're still trying to prosecute here. I just think that like from the Democrat standpoint, that you don't you want to actually hold off on any of this legislation, any of this lock him up stuff, because if the optics look like you're trying to lock up a political opponent, and let's say he were to go to jail when he goes before the judge, you might as well hand him the election. If you're a Democrat and you want him to go to jail on any of those convictions or spend any time behind bars, go for it. Trump in jail using a phone call to call Fox News from prison, it's, his, his support's going to go through the roof. I want to hear the Trump supporters say that Donald Trump is a convicted felon. Can you at least acknowledge reality? Yeah, currently. Well, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm, not a, I'm not a Trump, just so you know, oh, no, I'm not you a Trump don't supporter. Get that. You don't get that. But I'm happy to say New York it. until the post-sentencing. So I, so I would say well. that currently he is, currently like he's in, once he gets sentenced, then I will say officially he is a felon. But the thing is, those could be overturned because the judge in the case, who actually, I don't know if you know this. So many reversible errors and his daughter is completely compromised. It's just horrible, James. Yes, horrible. his daughter actually works for the DNC and has made over $11 million from Just them. unconscionable. <laughs> yeah, and on top of that, he then had Trump advisors that have a certain degree of, um, like, there's anonymity, meaning, like, they're not, they can't be, like, compelled to actually, like, answer these questions presidential privilege this judge and you know they literally called them and had them make statements on so because of that and the supreme court ruling they may actually have to throw this whole entire case out because the judge actually was using stuff that he shouldn't have been able to use so currently he's not a felon but he will be when he gets sentenced well, no, I don't, I don't think so. I think so. Yeah, it, if he gets sentenced, he would be considered. Yes, he's an official felon. I agree with you on that. The issue, though, is whether or not he should be. But the judge not accusing himself is a big issue because of his daughter making eleven million dollars working for the DNC. Like all this looks really bad for him and any other judge who's competent. If they had a family member that was in a conflict of interest like that, a close family member, they would have stepped aside. There's no reason for this guy to stay. Isn't that guy a Trump appointed? Okay, but there's appointed really, by Trump? no, but there's a really interested, interesting story in the information that I just saw that OpenAI, their latest uh, model, the Project Strawberry, the Q Star. They have demonstrated that to national security officials, and they were told to hold off on releasing it until after the election for security reasons. Uh, I haven't heard any of that, but I, I'm just saying is it... Well, no, I mean, you can look at it. I just came out today, this story, this article. Okay. Look up the information. Uh, this The title of the article, I think, is OpenAI Races to Launch Strawberry Reasoning AI to Boost Chatbot Business. Oh wait, wait, what, 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 what were you saying, Ethan? What, what was the new article? It came out about what? So OpenAI, they have their their latest model. It's not ChatGPT five, I don't think, but it's basically uh, intermediate between Foro and ChatGPT five, which is they're calling QStar Project Strawberry. There was some reporting about it last year, this project, and there's been some speculation about it recently, but apparently, they demonstrated that technology to national security officials. And the national security officials encouraged them to refrain from releasing it until after November for the election. Yeah, I saw that. I saw that article this morning. That is like crazy. Did you guys see the letter that uh, that Zuckerberg released? Yeah, I saw that too. 
Oh yeah, that's that's not good. He so they have where the FBI was actually having Facebook hold back information like the actual true factual reported articles and they deemed them as misinformation and that would have potentially could have hurt Biden in the 2020 election um it's just a lot of shenanigans that's a good article to read yeah read that one everybody should read it Mark Zuckerberg actually comes out and says what they did was wrong and he shouldn't have done it. What do you think about uh, Hunter Biden? Is he a, is he a felon or no? Nah? Is he a criminal? So I think that Hunter Biden engaged in criminal activity. That's There's no doubt about that. Um, once I, Has he been sentenced yet? He's been convicted. No, I mean, has he been sentenced yet? Like they've, this is what know. you, because if, if he's been convicted and there's still like some open-ended, then I wouldn't want to say, hey, felon. But if somebody were to say Trump is a felon and look at Trump's character and say Trump is a terrible person because he's a felon, well, then they would have to also say that Hunter Biden is a terrible person because he's a felon. And that would also mean that Joe Biden is standing up for a convicted felon while condemning another convicted felon. And that just doesn't make sense. But we should also remember that the Justice Department let the statute of limitations run out on the most significant charges against Hunter Biden regarding his, uh, regarding his dealings with China and Ukraine. They actually purposely let those run out and then just gave them the gun charges, right? Would they ever do that for Trump? Would they ever let the most significant charges that they think they've got him on run out and then let him plead to something else? Because if you recall, initially, the Justice Department was allowing Hunter to, do, to a plea deal that would see no jail, jail time. And it was he was pleading to essentially nothing. And the judge actually caught it and said, wait, 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 wait. hold on. You can't do this and made them go back and undo the plea deal. But would they ever do that for Trump? That's the question. And if the answer is no, then then you're back to wondering again why the government is weaponizing the justice system against Trump, even though he's an asshole. That's what you have to wonder about. It's not whether Trump is a dick or Trump did something wrong. It's just to try to figure out why is there a misapplication of justice when it's benefiting your party and not another one. I think that the other the other issue to consider with all this is that it seems like that they don't think that they can win through an open fair election. So the way to uh, do this is to discredit him or to lock him up. Or maybe he just is a bad Bad yeah, man. wouldn't want to discredit the guy that started the first modern insurrection in American presidency and called a state well, elected. Well, so something to consider, too, is when you look at the prosecution of people there, there are some people who do need to be prosecuted. I'm not going to disagree with that. Yeah, like Ray but, Epps, maybe? The, How about Ray Epps? Hold on, hold on. But the heavy-handed prosecution of the people who were there, even people who are peaceably protesting, compared to like for example what just happened during some of these anti-war protests where they permanently defaced marble um a lot of them were let go charges dropped nothing and then you also see like for other protests like when they had the black Lives matter protests and other things like that charges were dropped nothing to the substantial nature of what was done for people who even attended there and protested peacefully. So the, the issue that a lot of people are saying is that if you're going to prosecute this way, you need to prosecute consistently across the board. The issue that I don't think that the Democrats thought of is now that you've opened up that 
any past president or anybody running for presidential office, now their political opponent can allow people to leave certain high positions to take new positions at the state level to target a political opponent. And that's not good. Yeah, it just sound like some conspiracy stuff. No, I mean, you, you do know that realize, and I I'm, I'm apologize for escaping the guy's name, you do know that he left this higher up position and, and the government, very familiar with Biden, interacted with Biden, to take this lower position on the state level with the sole purpose of doing this to Trump. And I'm not saying that there's anything that says Biden directly told him to go do this, but from an optic standpoint, it looks really bad. I mean, it's a pretty serious accusation to say that the Department of Justice is being weaponized against a political opponent. I you, think you it need is some pretty pretty serious evidence to back that up. I think I've I think I gave a couple of very good points in here. Like, for example, the charges that are now felonies, all those were as misdemeanors initially, and they would not be considered a felony. But because they had passed their statute of limitations, in order to still try to use these to charge him, they had to, you know, beef them up to a felony. All this is stuff that you can see. James, the thing you're referring to was that there was a uh, a member on the White House staff that left the White House staff to go to work for the uh, state uh, under Alvin Bragg in New York. So he left a national prominent position at the White House in order to go work for New York instead, and with under the which essentially ended up being under the sole purpose of prosecuting Trump, right? Now, you could just say, oh, it's just a coincidence. People leave the White House in the middle of a presidency all the time and go to work for small, for a state as opposed to the national government. You could say that, and that's fine. But it does raise the question, like, is there something going on there that's more nefarious? That's all I'm saying. And I'm just saying that, like, let's say that, because I actually, I don't think, I don't hate Biden. But I just think that the optics for all this, if I was Biden, I, I would have knocked this, I would have had this knocked off six to eight months ago. Because like, for example, when they actually like took Trump and got his mugshot, do you know how cool that mugshot photo looks of Trump? I don't know. I don't know how he got like a decent mugshot. I, I've never seen anybody get a good mugshot. But Trump got one so much so that it went on shirts and it energized people. To go and get their own mugshot or, or what? No, I mean, it's uh, being a good role model. <laughs> well, no, no, it energized people because they felt like here is this uh, candidate who shares our values, who's running for our party's nominee, who now is, now is in this position, who is this, and he's being persecuted. Uh, you know, literally with legal actions done tied to the current administration, they never should have done that. That was bad. It was a big mistake on the Democrats' part. I don't know, dude. You're saying some like pretty serious stuff, and I'm not really hearing the serious evidence that needs to go along with it. Tim already gave you more detail about the person leaving and going to the lower position, and that person when he left said he's going to prosecute Trump. Like that was that was his goal. Now I'm not saying that you have any evidence where Biden said, I need you to leave this position to then go prosecute him, but the optics don't look good. I just want to make it clear that I am not a fan of Donald Trump. I do not like him and I hope I wish that there was another alternative than Kamala Harris to, to fight against him. I'm not saying that. I'm just in, in the interest of being what I consider to be 
equal. I don't think that it's been equal towards him, but I do think he's a jerk. So I just want to say that. Yeah, I'm totally open to um, like <clears throat> I'm totally open to like uh, Biden being uh, you know the Bidens being like criminals or whatever. You know, I just want to see the evidence for it. But, so I don't really see it that much. So if you go, it. there's sorry, there's articles of you go where it's like here's one of the first searches with it. Ex cop Biden, DOJ official, now per, no now prosecuting Trump, and then it also says he was also once paid by the DNC for political consulting. So now you have somebody who was paid by the DNC for political consulting. He was also in the Department of Justice, Biden's Department of Justice. He then leaves this high prominent position for a lower position on the state level telling people that he's going to prosecute Trump. It's just th those optics aren't good, Elliot. Well, can lucky you, for you, James, I just got back to help you. Can you yeah, at least, well, I mean, can you at least say that, ahead, though, Elliot, that it's not, we're not saying that Biden oh, actually yeah, yeah. said, go do this, but can you at least see, like, perception-wise, why that looks really bad? Once again, thank you for watching. Please comment down in the description. Like, subscribe for more content. Also, if you are a liberal who'd like to debate me, please message me in the back channel or comment in the video and I'll set up a time. Clean the light riding, but I know that they ain't. Ride or die. I go hard in the paint, yeah, homie, I'm a saint. Ride or die.